Howdy guys. Welcome to night number one of Big Brother 23. Oh, I'm so excited. It's finally here. And welcome to Cliff Notes from outside the Big Brother house. Now you'll notice no green screen behind me. I'm on a business trip, but I'm not letting that stop me from the live feeds on premiere evening. No, sir, not at all. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about what we're going to do here with, with Cliff Notes for, for a second season. Uh, I'm trying to cover primarily the overnight feeds. Uh, so y'all don't have to stay up all night long to do so. I'm going to cover the over, overnight feeds. I'm going to try to keep it to about 15 minutes length. So you don't have to spend hours and hours to figure out what happened overnight to talk to everyone the, the next morning about. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, a couple of things as well. There will be spoilers covered. We're going to talk about things that haven't shown up on the episodes yet. So if you don't want to be spoiled, you'll just have to watch a little bit later on replay. Uh, the other thing as well, I, I try to always keep in mind, I live through it. These are real people, real emotions, real families, giving it the best they can. So I'm going to try to stay positive throughout the season out here. Doesn't mean I won't point out some things I think may not have worked right, but I'm going to try to stay positive about the people themselves. I hope you all do too. We're all here for entertainment. So with that being said, let's talk about what happened this evening. Oh, I'm just so happy, my friends. Uh, so first of all, uh, the live show, an hour and a half show. Uh, we get four groups of people moving into the house, meeting Julie Chen Moonvez for the first time. Uh, now, one thing to point out, there is a little bit of a, uh, of a uh, superstition that the first person that enters the house isn't going to win Big Brother. And it hasn't happened yet, at least not in the, the uh, US version. Uh, so just for your information, Derek F. Derek Frazier is the first one to enter the house. He's one of my favorites. So I'm hoping that Derek, uh, Eh, maybe he breaks the curse. We shall see. But Derek F. enters uh, the house first. Now, it's interesting. We've always seen people enter four at a time. This time, however, they're entering four at a time. They're immediately beginning a competition uh, to determine a captain for each of these four groups. Uh, the, the puzzle they have to solve, uh, they go into the backyard. It's a five-piece puzzle that they have to solve. Uh, five-piece puzzle. Shout out to Caitlin Herman. Herman, how you doing, Caitlin? Uh, five-piece puzzle. This is actually a travel poster. It has like five different slides of, of glass, of, of plastic, and it has to be inserted in the right order for the picture to mimic the, the travel poster that's behind. Whoever does it first rings in, becomes the captain for, for that group of four. It's a pretty cool puzzle itself. And as a result, the winners of those four groups uh, that come in, the four captains that we start the, uh, the season with are Frenchie, Whitney, Christian, and Claire. Uh, so those are the four. Now that they're captains, they will then compete for HOH uh, along with, uh, well, before that, they're going to draft players uh, to represent each of their teams. Uh, now, I like the way that they drafted the players. Instead, of just a schoolyard pick where you get to pick everyone one at a time, they spin a little uh, slot machine and they're given two choices uh, of who they get to pick. So it's not quite as brutal as a schoolyard pick, uh, but they go through, the, they make all their choices. In the interest of time, I'm, I'm not gonna cover it here, uh, but I, I feel like the teams are pretty well balanced in terms of you know, competitive, strong looking people, people that I think will play good mental games, uh, people who uh, yeah, I think are gonna have good social games, things like that. It seems like it's a pretty pretty evenly split. Now I did notice that the four teams are are named. Uh, we're gonna have a casino theme throughout the, the year, it seems like. Uh, they're named after, or they're the team jokers, the team aces, the team kings, and the team queens. Now I wondered why would you have the team jokers and not just start with aces and work your way down? I think it's because no one wanted to be on the Team Jacks. So, I don't know. Take, take from that what you will. But I guess they said no Team Jacks, so let's give some, uh, some Jokers instead. Again, the teams seem pretty well balanced, but we now have four teams uh, of three people each. So the next step is to figure out who the HOH is for the evening. We're not going to have an eviction on that one. We're not going to have a banishment. Woo! I'm glad to hear that. Uh, but we are going to have a, an HO, HOH named in the very first season. And the competition that they have consists of each team having to balance a, a little platform. The, the, the HOH is then not going to actually stack uh, some pre-constructed cards to make basically a card house. So the team captain is going to be doing the building. The other three players are going to be trying to keep that platform balanced. Uh, Julie says go. They all start competing. I, I believe Christian was the first one. I think it was Christian who had his tower built, is running over to uh, ring in, and the tower collapses before he can get there. Uh, in the end, Frenchie, who won the first group of four competition for captain, wins the HOH. 
uh, wins not only HOH, but now he is one safety uh, for his group as well. And, and his group is, is Frenchie, Aza, uh, Brittany, and, and Derek Frazier. So all four of them are safe. Or so we think, uh, because then Julie brings up one of the first twists that maybe we didn't know so much about. She basically says, all right, Frenchie, here's a platform in front of you. Roll these two bouncy foam dice. If you can make both of them land on the platform in the next 45 seconds, instead of getting safety for you and your team for two week, or for one week, you get it for two weeks. But if you can't make it in 45 seconds, you don't get HOH at all. No safety for any of y'all. And the second place team, which uh, was that Claire, I think, uh, Claire, whose team had finished in second, Julie says she'll become HOH instead if you want to take on that, that risk. Frenchie thinks about it, says, no, nah, I, I think I'm good. I really want to see my family. So that's the excuse he used that he wanted the pics of his family that he would get as an HOH. And I think it's a valid, uh, a valid reason. He's got young kids at home. I know he wants to see, see pics of those kids after being in sequester for two weeks. But I also think it was the right decision from a strategic standpoint. Uh, yeah, you get an extra week of safety, but being the, the HOH in that first week is such a power broker position. It's forcing everyone to come to Frenchie, and we're gonna hear a little bit about this if, this evening. Forces everyone to come to Frenchie. He's gonna be the center of power. Hey, we saw how it worked with Cody last season, and, and I think it could work as well here. So I think Frenchie made the right decision. Uh, so there you go. Uh, at that point, we basically cut away. Oh, no, one more thing. Instead of $500,000, they're playing for three quarters of a million dollars this year, $750,000. That sounds pretty good. Good congratulations uh, to whoever wins this thing, and uh, you get to take home just a little extra paycheck. All right, so let's talk about the actual live feeds now. We we move away from the the show itself, and uh, we'll see what what happens at this point. All right, uh, well, let's first of all let's take a little interlude, a little break. Turn it up, turn it up, celebrate, turn it up. I'm gonna get so tired of that song after a while. Uh, whoop. First night, uh, there's a lot of people, a lot of feeds breaking away, and I'm sure it's because production was calling people out for talking about diary room, talking about production, talking about things that, that you aren't supposed to be taught, singing. I, I didn't hear a lot of singing, but mainly talking about production and such. So we saw a lot of feeds going away, and every time we get the same song, uh, it's going to just burn a hole into my brain. I'll, I'll remember it for the rest of my life before this, this season is over, but uh, we did have that uh, as well. We get back to or get to the live feeds, and one of the first things that I noticed, now first of all, let me say this, with 16 people in a house, it's tough to keep track of all the conversations and get all of it documented. It gets a little la easier later in the season uh, when you don't have quite so many people all at once. So I've, I've tried to highlight it as best I can. And the first thing that we see, uh, one of the first things is we get back uh, to the live feeds or get into the live feeds. Alyssa is in the bathroom, uh, sick, throwing up, she's grabbing the trash can, throwing up. Don't know if, you know, they, they have a little food in the house and everything. I have a feeling it's probably nerves uh, that's gotten to her, but she's feeling bad. Everyone's feeling pretty sympathetic for her. I did hear one of the house guests, a couple of house guests mentioned that they'd been up since six o'clock in the morning. So you can imagine, it's been a long day and, and the nerves getting to you, the butterflies are going into the house. Well, it's finally gotten to Alyssa and she's not feeling well at all. So she's staying primarily in the bathroom with a blanket and just trying to, uh, to get a little, little comfortable. Uh, let's talk about have-nots before anything else. Uh, you had the winner team that, that won safety. The last place team became have-nots. Uh, you don't necessarily want to be a, a have-not, and in this case, it's team the Kings uh, with Christian, Alyssa, Xavier, and, and Sarah Beth. Uh, the have-not room, we actually get to see it this evening. Uh, Julie didn't go up there, try to open the doors, but we saw her. Uh, we saw the, the have-not room. It's kind of a broken down room. It's got a jet ski that I'm pretty sure was a jet ski that I used in, in my video competition back in season 21. Looks like it. Uh, but yeah, kind of a broken down room. Here's the thing. There's already plenty of house guests who have talked about how brutally hot that, that house is. And it is. It, it can get really warm with all the lights. The have-not room is cool. I, it must be the first place for the air conditioning because uh, it's very cool in a have-not room. They're going to really appreciate uh, having that AC working for them. Now, the, the drawback, the disadvantage is you're a little bit isolated from all the other people that are sleeping uh, downstairs because you don't have as much interaction with them. But they're going to enjoy the, the nice, cool comfort of that upstairs uh, have-not room. Uh, there is some slop involved, and we saw later in the evening them trying to cook up. I think Christian tried to cook up some slop, and... Yeah, mixed success. No one, no one's real excited, but they figure they can probably live on it uh, if they have to. 
So uh, with that in mind, uh, we, one of the first conversations we see that, that has some strategic elements to it. Frenchie and Tiffany are, are talking in the li living room. It seems like they're bonding over, over being parents and being the, the two older house guests uh, in the house. I'm glad to see it. I want to see, I want to see some, some alliances form and I'd love to see it between them. Frenchie mentions a few things that are, that are kind of interesting during this conversation. One, uh, he, he implies, I, it may not be implication, I think he, he pretty much straight up said he's probably not targeting the women right off the bat. Uh, he also mentions here, and he mentions it several more times later in the evening, he wants to be the showman's killer. He doesn't want the showmances in the house. He's going to boot anyone that he thinks get, gets too tight with each other. All right. I don't have any huge complaints with that, but these duos, that's, uh, it was tough during my season. So, so Frenchie envisions himself as being the showman's killer. Throughout the evening, I see Frenchie talking to a lot of people. It really seems like he's a little bit tighter with the women, a little more aligned with them. And so maybe we're starting to see a little bit of a hint of, of what kind of alliance he may put together, who he feels tightest with in terms of trust and everything else. I don't know if that'll pay off or not, Frenchie. Uh, we'll see, but it seems like he may not be so uh, unwilling to go after not only showmances, but perhaps also some of the alpha males in this house. So we're, we're going to talk about that very briefly uh, in just a second. But but certainly uh, Tiffany and Frenchie seem like they've they've hit it off at that point in time. Uh, I do notice that that he talks to Tiffany about that they both talk about veto hiding spots and where good places are to hide vetoes. I think it's a little bit early, but I like y'all's thinking. You might as well start planning right now. I spent six, seven weeks looking for veto hiding spaces. Uh, we see downstairs at the memory wall, uh, Christian, Brent, Derek X trying to remember everyone's names. It's not easy. So much going on this first night. Uh, Frenchie is doing a lot of talking on night one. Yeah, I know he's HOH, but we're still, it's night one. This is a marathon. It's not a sprint. So uh, I hope he's just a little excitement at the time, but... Uh, you don't want to be talking too much and, and saying too many things to too many people until you get better lay of the land. But, but Frenchie is doing a lot of talking, as are some other people uh, as well. Uh, now, Tiffany, we hear uh, uh, her calling out. I thought this was cute. Tiffany is calling out her son saying, you better be watching me on TV and not playing Fortnite. Uh, I, I love having the parents in the house. They're, they're talking about their families and such. Uh, Frenchie mentions it, that he's friends with Rockstar, how sweet Rockstar is, how helpful uh, she, uh, she is. And so uh, it was cool, Frenchie calling out Rockstar a little bit. Uh, we do see Whitney and Tiffany uh, outside the storage room, and, and they're worried about a big alliance, saying, look, you know, we've had it. We had it in the season 21. We had it last season as well. Uh, this big alliance, we need to be proactive, form an alliance of our own to start with. And, and it's interesting because what we eventually end up with is, is Whitney and Tiffany. Frenchie walks in, so they grab Frenchie. They also mention Brittany as a fourth person, and then some unknown. I don't think they ever mentioned a, a name number five. Uh, so those four plus someone else may be, may be trying to make a little power move, forming an alliance uh, off the bat as well. Here's the thing. We see a lot of people talking to a whole lot of other people. Everyone's being super friendly. It's tough to see who is really sincere. You don't ever say no to an alliance, right? It's tough to see who's really sincere in the relations with everyone else when they're talking nice. It's a little easier to see when you start seeing some people criticizing uh, other people. And, and we saw just a little bit of that this evening. Uh, but, it, but keep it in mind as, as we go forward. Uh, now, uh, before we talk about that, one more thing that just kind of hits close to home. Derek Frazier is, is talking. I think he's back in the yacht room. Uh, he's talking, saying uh, he's worried about snoring. He doesn't want to bother anyone. He doesn't want to offend anyone. I hear you, brother. I, that was one of my big concerns in the house as well. Hey, he's worried about the snoring, and, and we'll see how that works out. Uh, probably isn't going to matter tonight because these folks, no one's going to bed. Everyone, No one wants to be first. They're all staying up all night long. They're staying up longer than I am, I think. So uh, uh, we won't see the snoring issue tonight. Now, tomorrow night, that may be a whole different ball game. Uh, we see uh, at one point Travis and Christian and, and Kylan and Derek X upstairs talking and really bonding. I, I feel like these two may be, or these four may be feeling tighter and tighter with each other. Uh, so we'll see how, how the loyalties uh, go with that. Now, they're also up there playing chess, and they're all down playing. Oh, I don't know how to play chess. I, I know the rules, but I'm not that good. I don't believe any of them. I think they probably I know it much better. Uh, but they're, they're all up there playing chess. Here's my question. Where's the backgammon set? Surely there's going to be a backgammon set in the house this season, right? If not, well, I'm glad I had it during my season. Uh, but, but they're all talking about it. Now, talking about a little 
little uh, uh, deception and all in terms of chess. Uh, at one point, we also had Xavier. Uh, he's the attorney. Uh, he's smart. I, I know he's smart. Uh, but he's telling everyone he's a bartender. Uh, just to downplay it a little bit. Don't blame him at all. Not, not one bit. So, let's talk about some people who weren't so complimentary to each other uh, and keep this in mind as well. Uh, Frenchie and Whitney in the kitchen. And uh, Whitney tells uh, Frenchie, at one point Frenchie's getting ready to grab some dishes. And Whitney says, no, let, let little Derek. I'm not sure I like that name, but she said, let little Derek uh, take care of that. He needs to come down and do the dishes. And uh, it's, it's kind of funny when you see someone point out something that early. So apparently Whitney and Derek already maybe aren't, aren't on the best terms. And that's further confirmed because then uh, we we see upstairs Derek X is up there, uh, little Derek. I'm not gonna call, I'm not calling that. Derek X is upstairs with Christian, Travis, Kylan. Again, I said they're kind of bonding with each other, and they seem to be dragging Whitney uh, a little bit. Derek X is saying that uh, that Whitney was really flustered during the HOH competition, and they had to tell her what to do. Uh, and apparently, they heard, and maybe this came from Christian. I, I wasn't real clear on it that. Uh, she was saying that, that she would want to backdoor someone if she has HOH. You know, you, you make people a little nervous and suspicious when you start talking about that. But even more than, than the actual words that were said, the fact that they're already kind of throwing her name out there a little bit suspicious, does that represent a dividing line that we're getting ready to see? Eh, it could be. All right, so with uh, with that in mind, we... Uh, um, what's going on? Uh, we have... <laughs> we also have up there... Kylan, Christian, Whitney, and Claire a little bit later. Uh, there's a lot of time spent up in, the, in that chess room, that little poker lounge area. Uh, we hear Kylan, Christian, Whitney, and Claire up there talking about their feet and toes and your second toes is longer than your big toe and they're comparing and all that. Be careful, guys, or else your feet are all going to end up on, on interesting websites that, that you may or may not know about. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, uh, don't, don't, don't be talking about the feet too much. Uh, we do, uh, we also see, oh, I'm glad we got to see it. Frenchie got his HOH room uh, about 3.30 or so uh, in the morning. Was that local time, their time? I think so. I don't know. It may have been my time. It's been a long night, guys. But Frenchie gets his room and everyone goes out there. I, I'm glad we got to see it. Last season, we didn't always see uh, everyone get their, their HOH rooms. But we got Frenchie's and, he, of course, he broke down when he saw his family and, and his kids and everything else. Put on his robe. Everyone went up there and was happy. Uh, I did see, I think, Travis and Derek X and, and maybe Claire. I don't remember. Uh, they are kind of the first ones to, to leave the, uh, the HOH room. That, that sometimes tells, gives you a little information uh, as well. Uh, now, one thing, uh, well, a, a couple of things. One, uh, while they're all waiting downstairs to get up into the HOH room, Frenchie's in the diary room, uh, everyone's talking and everything. I noticed something. I noticed that Brent Champagne just kind of seemed a little bit isolated, not really syncing up with everyone else, talking to everyone quite as much. He just seemed a little, a little set back a, a little bit. Uh, he's an alpha male, uh, just doesn't seem to be syncing with everyone else as much. D does that suggest he may be in trouble? Maybe we'll find out as we go through the next few days. We don't know when the nominations are, are going to occur just yet. Uh, I also noticed something else. Brent and Derek X are sitting in the nomination chairs while they're all visiting. I never wanted to sit in those nomination chairs unless someone was forcing me to. That was my own particular superstition. But they're sitting in the nomination chairs. Doesn't seem to bother them. All right, meanwhile, a couple other conversations. Xavier downstairs uh, is telling Brent uh, that he doesn't really care what's happening uh, up in the HOH room. Up in the HOH room, we've got Frenchie, Claire, Hannah, Brittany, Hannah, again, uh, Hannah, uh, Aza, and Kylan. It's just small talk. Uh, but here's the thing, uh, just small talk, not nothing huge, but Brittany does mention uh, that she listened to Cliff Notes every morning last season. Thank you, Brittany. Uh, and the, the, she, she listened all the time, and she's sure I'm doing them again this year. I don't remember if she said that. I bet she said she listened to them every morning last season. Uh, and so keep that in mind. For those of you who are listening, if you want to get on to Big Brother, I'm not saying that one leads to the other, but I'm not saying it doesn't either. Uh, so thank you. Shout out to Brittany for mentioning Cliff Notes and all that. That's really cool. But uh, again, while they're all having the conversation upstairs, Xavier's downstairs telling Brent, I don't really care what happens up there. I'll talk to Frenchie later. It's a bunch of people all just hanging on. And it is. 
Everyone wants to be best friends with Frenchie. No one wants to go to bed before anyone else because they're all so worried that they'll be plotting and conspiring and planning that doesn't involve them, or maybe it does in a negative way. And so there's a lot of people that just so badly want to go to bed, but no one's willing to go first. Uh, so I, I get what Xavier's saying, that he'll hit up Frenchie later. He's not going to be a hanger on and all that, but you got to be careful. Uh, these first few days are so critical and you can't isolate yourself too much. You can't be too removed from the conversations and have people forget about you or start whispering your name. So Xavier's gonna have to kind of balance that out a little bit. Sometimes you gotta go up and hang around and, uh, and talk and be seen even if, if you don't really feel like doing it. Uh, Frenchie does tell uh, uh, Hannah and, and Asa and Claire, and several people have left, it's just the three of them, or four of them. Uh, again, Frenchie, ha Hannah, Aza and Claire. Uh, it tells them that, again, he says, if you want to be in a showman, that's fine, but just be aware uh, that, that I am going to be the showman's killer. Uh, so again, I, I mentioned earlier, I, I feel like he's just a little tighter with the women right now, uh, and, and we'll see if that develops into a more formal alliance as, as we go forward. And then finally, at around 4 o'clock local time, they start saying, ah, let's just go to bed. We're, we're going to go to bed. They're starting to figure out that the lights don't turn off unless everyone is in bed. Uh, and there's so they're they're all ready to go and, and that ends it for the evening again a lot of conversations I, I've tried to hit the highlights uh, and it'll get easier as we start seeing these relationships develop and everything else so guys I'm looking forward to a, to a, a fantastic season I love the cast I love all 16 of them I think there's some real game players in there we're gonna have a lot of fun and welcome aboard I hope you all are in in for the long run with me uh, with cliff notes again I'm gonna try to do it every morning I said it was going to be 15 minutes long. This one's going to be a little bit longer. You know, it's the start of the season, and I'm so happy. Guys, y'all have a great one. I will talk to y'all again tomorrow. In the meanwhile, SKD143, uh, I love Big Brother. Cheers, my friends. Bye.